Ulma and HDIV Security. Oscar Rocari, Software Director in Ulma, and Roberto Velasco, HDIEV Security. These two people are just here. You now have the floor. Thank you. Just a little correction. I'm not Oscar. I'm Miquel Altuna. I'm replacing him. So my name is Miquel Altuna. Process and innovation. Hello. As you know, in uh, Industry 4.0, we speak about hardware and machines, but software is, an, is a key element. T today, we're going to talk about software. So let's present the project. You may know our company, Ulma Handling Systems. This company is, uh, belongs to Ulma Group. Our activity is about intra-logistics engineering. To specify what we do, we optimize uh, all the management and the processing of goods that is made uh, within walls. We're not doing maritime handling. We um, deal with um, goods uh, flows within four walls. It's, a, it's about a, an automatic warehouse, and we deal with this type of logistics. In our engineering activity, in our uh, engineering tasks, we cover the whole uh, life cycle of this process. This is the distribution center of Eroski Elorrio. Uh, there's many robots working there and control software going on and management software is all over the place. You can't see it, but it's there. It's latent. In this distribution center, for example, we could mention other cases, but this is our main example. In this distribution center, we are preparing the orders in an automated way. Orders that are going to come to the final uh, selling points of our customer, Eroski, chain of supermarkets. When a local store or a small supermarket uh, makes an order to the central office, this uh, order is prepared in an automated way, to fully automated in this center. You just imagine the, the implications, availability, productivity, and security problems that could arise. That's why we're here today. In our company, security is very important, and we are covering it on different levels. First, we are an engineering company, and our main assets is our knowledge and expertise. We have knowledge that we have to protect. It's true. And we have also this manufacturing area. We are integrators, but we manufacture part of our premises and our materials. So we have to pre protect the OT network assets too. But what's worrying for us is to protect our knowledge. So this is about internal infrastructures protection. In our case, and that's our difference, we provide a product to our customers. We have these warehouses, these dis logistics distribution uh, buildings, and they are super critical for our customers. If this center stops for half an hour or an hour, the, the, there's going to be a scarcity of products uh, uh, the day after in the supermarket. So availability uh, requirements are very high. Behind that, we have contracts with the customers, I have to uh, comply with availability, availability levels, 99%, and these are very stringent uh, requirements. Security in these premises, in these uh, warehouses, we could divide it, in fact, in two different sections. Hardware security, OT security, how would we guarantee that, that the accesses to PLCs and machines are secured? But as I said before, software that is managing all this 
this is the orchestra director. It's the conductor. Even though we can have 20 robots, a very complex system that allow us to handle the, the goods, if the conductor is not here, this stops. We can have all the protected accesses. We can have a, a lot of firewalls. We have many uh, security devices. But if software uh, fails, uh, everything fails. And software is vital for us. That's why four years ago, we started to work with Roberto and his colleagues in uh, HDIF, because for us, it was so clear that we had to give more uh, importance to CyberSec. And the uh, software architecture that we were distributing was key. It was about security by design. We um, rethought our management software architectures, and that's why we co started to collaborate with HDIV. And our security level is now higher in our uh, premises. We have a lot to do yet, but we're making very effective steps forward. I now give the floor to Roberto. He's going to explain much better than me what the, that product does. Thank you, Mikkel. First of all, I'd like to give you a context. When we talk about software, we have different types of software. The uh, operate, operative system is software. An application is software, but we have to focus on selecting products and to update products. But the complex part here is software that we are now pro programming. It's our, our own uh, software that is programmed by ourselves, by the industrial company, or by a third party. We have a specific components for a specific need. For instance, of in the case of Ulma, they have premises where software from one installation to the other is completely different because they have different needs. When we speak about software, and this picture is quite clear, it's about the code and people. You see the reflection of a person looking at the screen. This component, if especially if there are major changes in software, this depends on people. It's a very difficult uh, element to manage people. First of all, I'd like to, um, you to uh, understand this idea. We're talking about uh, code uh, security and app uh, security. And we have two different types of problems, Secu security bugs, syntax problems. And if you do, are not experts on code, these are uh, spelling uh, bugs. Maybe you use a uh, word uh, when writing text, and you have the uh, uh, spelling uh, correction system. And uh, you, you maybe you are very good writers, but uh, I, um, the spelling checker is very important for me. And part part of the problems can be detected through tools that automatically tell us in this file on this line of code you have a security bug. It, it's a spell checker for us for security bugs, and all companies should use that, those spell checkers. This is the easiest part. But then you, uh, I will ask you during coffee if you're applying this. If it's simple, but many people do not apply, you have this word spell checker, but now we use it for my industry 4.0, and many people don't use it, even though it's a simple tool. And the complex part, it's the other 50% that we call business logic flaws. It's a much more complex system to explain. But using the same metaphor, it's about semantic problems. It's not about spelling anymore. The, the word spell checkers tells us what are the letters that are missing. But if the text is, is not understandable, there's the syntax uh, checker that, um, that can help you. If you apply the same problem to a software, it's very, very complex to do the syntax checker. The business logic is com very complex in Ulma and in other companies. It's a, these checks ha have to be done. It depends on the uh, business logic. In each plant, it's different. And we need to implement all this in a manual way. It's so complex. So let's see how we do this business logic check. Just to give uh, a context for uh, business 
business logic flaws. Syntax problems are easiest to understand. A, a very uh, simple um, example with browsers. On top, you see the URL that we can edit. You can write your domain or whatever on this line. This is Ulma application with specific data related to the business logic uh, in Ulma. Here we see an order with the uh, ID, the state of the, the order, etc. If nobody attacks that, this application will be okay. So it's expected. Uh, and the application does what it has to do. Maybe you have this app on the on the cloud, and there's an employee who is not happy with the company and who wants to attack, external or internal attacker. If we manipulate those parameters, we could try and uh, tamper on the state of an order that is um, that in fact is not really executed, or we can do it the double execution of that order. So this is going to uh, attack the system, the order uh, system. So this type of examples, that is unexpected actions on the apps, this is very difficult to stop manually, because normally programmers do the general uh, business logic programming, and they never think that an attacker can, could do that. Once the, the problem is um, shown, let's look for the solution. The software application security we present as, as a process in three steps. And we recommend you to follow the order. If you don't have the spell checker or the security check, uh, you can't use the pen testing because you're going to see more and more problems. If you don't have the basic tools, you will find thousands of bugs and problems. I'm talking about thousands of security problems. It's quite normal when you go and see a customer who doesn't have this, the security spell check. So the first step is to use a detection tool. In the case of Word, for instance, it's a security check. And we have one, but you can use others, of course and we detect the, the problems. Then the second step, uh, architecture review. Maybe people don't understand this quite well. The word architecture, if we apply it to buildings, we it's easier to understand. An architect makes a design for a building, and we start to build uh, the, the building. When we uh, make a software, Sometimes we uh, skip this step. We start to program internally or through a provider, but not thinking really about the how, what are the libraries that we're going to use, how we, are we going to later on automize validations, what are the, are the threats or the hazards. And so there's a review of the whole architecture, how I'm going to mount applications. And once this step is done, we can in in include security solutions that are automatically applied. The weak point is that what we've seen on the photo, the people. If we want to implement security with good practice, this helps improving the security level, of course, but it doesn't work in practice. It doesn't work just like that. We have to be realistic. It's quite complex to do it manually. So we need to do a whole design uh, task and to automate security. And the last step, pen testing. When we speak about security, sometimes uh, people hire a, a consulting company or a pen testing or an audit. But uh, you don't, if you haven't done the two first steps, uh, you could uh, fail. So pen testing comes at the end. In the first two questions, you say, no, we're not doing that. One and two, maybe we have a serious security problem. And pen testing is not going to solve it. This is the process. And now, more specifically, we'll explain how we've implemented in Ulma. In this case, we used uh, HD security detection tools, but also our services. For instance, in detection, it's a plug and play solution. We have a product, a console, and it reports the security box that we have. In protection, there is a service component. We need to not analyze the way we create software in Ulma, according to the customers, and integrate our, solutions, uh, our solution in that architecture. 
So we integrate our uh, products with uh, the standard technologies in the market. We have programming um, tasks, but uh, in fact, the way we program is quite similar to what uh, other people do by defect. We don't change our programming uh, system. We integrate security as something that is there by defect. It's included. If, a, if we have a very bad programmers or, the, or very bad security providers or development providers, people do, who don't take into account security, with our products, our security is still very high. So it's good to have that because it's embedded. And the last uh, step, it's pen testing. There are many products for n detection of security bugs but we have also a product for uh, the verification of this pen testing uh, step. It's called Burp Suite. So this is the application, and Mikkel uh, can explain how it works. This is a picture of one of our management applications that we use to govern uh, the warehouses. Let's see an example. So this is a web application that could be exposed or not to attacks. And I suppose that if anybody wants to attack us, uh, they can. They can do it uh, in, the, in our internal network. Here we see the results that we are obta obtaining with HDF console. You see the number of attacks every day, vulnerabilities that are being detected in the application. As a summary, what are the benefits that we are obtaining in Ulma? They're quite obvious. I forgot to tell you that we can have in production more than, more than 30 projects at the same time, with 50 to 60 programmers, engineers working at the same time, and no uh, no uh, single uh, installation is the same, so, and we have very short. Um, lead time. We have very short lead time. So, because of that, of that, customers are aware of the problems um, that security has. But we have so different projects, and lead time is very short. So it's very complex uh, uh, management, and we have to work hand in hand with our customers. So even though our lead time is short, even though we have to deliver tomorrow, we need to guarantee a, a more than acceptable level of security in order to give uh, all um, to secure all these uh, premises and warehouses. Availability. It's already been uh, said. Ava availability is fundamental availability and security together. In some sectors, availability is considered as protection of information. It's true. We manage critical information for our customers. We manage and we process information that they can consider as confidential and something that could uh, threaten their processes because that we have their information. It's easy to understand that we need to protect those data, data. But what is more difficult to understand is the importance of the, this link between security and availability. Availability versus uh, service needs. We need to give service, but we need this availability. We need to secure the systems. We have to include um, security devices. But when there's a problem, mm, do, do, caused by cybersecurity or not, because an engine um, fails, we need to be reactive. And we have to solve these incidents in, um, in a very fast way. We have to be very quick. So we have this, ver this security versus, um, versus availability. And for us, it's, cl it, it's, for us it's uh, clear. Key, the key element here is security, but depends on the, your customers, depends on the sectors, on profiles, whether what they want is that the machine starts to work now, because it has to be running now. But this depends on availability, and we need to look for this balance. To be, focus on our business, second conclusion, that's one of the benefits that we are getting. We have very different profiles in our programming 
team, people who've been working for us for, for more than with us with, for more than 20 years, and security wasn't present at the time in their training or in their late daily lives. We have new people who have more more knowledge, but they do not know mm, a lot about logistics, domain, the business. How do we do the matching? As a business, we want to focus on what really gives us value. It's about knowledge that we have about intralogistics. Our programmers have to worried, worry about cybersecurity because it's paramount, but they have to focus on our business. It's where we are um, getting value added. And to conclude, thanks to God, or to someone, it's more and more frequent that uh, customers uh, in their specifications refer to cybersecurity requ requirements, and we're quite happy about that because it's easier for us. If a customer is not aware of the importance of cybersecurity and it doesn't appear on the, in their specifications, it's harder for us because we need more time to support for delivery uh, times, costs, because security is cost. There's a cost behind security. You can consider it as expenditure, as just a mere cost, but it's not really that. Yesterday, there was a comment by Xavier Michelene. He, he spoke about cyber insecurity. Insecurity. What is the cost of insecurity? It's an interesting reflection. Well, this is it. If you have any questions, I'll be, we'll be uh, ready and available for you. Thank you.